right on cue to the clock is ticking toward a TikTok ban. That bill now on the governor's desk will tell you what it means for the state, plus hitting the slopes one last time. We uh, doubled our snow totals at least over the last month and it's been awesome up here. Ski season wraps up, but it's clear the fresh spring powder was a welcome surprise for many and a Billings family looking for a break. I've seen burnt rubble from someone else's disaster, you know, and it didn't really affect me, but now it's like, I, it will always affect me now every time I see that. After two traumatic events, they're now asking for the community's help. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Our top story, Montana leading the charge to become the first state in the U.S. to vote to ban TikTok. And tonight, that bill currently sits on Governor Greg Gianforte's desk, expected to be signed into law. Well, lawmakers say they have security concerns, but Montanans just trying to make an honest living object. Our Haley Monaco dives into the impacts the ban will have on small businesses. Controversy over the popular app TikTok has been in the news for months now, but on Friday, Montana became the first state to approve a bill that could ban the app. Senate Bill 419 would make it illegal to download TikTok in Montana if Governor Greg Gianforte signs it into law. Entities that distribute the app to users in the state could be fined up to $10,000 a day. I went from, you know, like 100 followers to like 20,000 which is insane. While users would not be fined, a ban of the video streaming app still worries many like Shauna White Bear, who markets her business, White Bear Moccasins, on TikTok. TikTok reaches a, a larger, broader audience um, versus Instagram. Bill to ban TikTok in Montana. Weeks ago, China shocked our nation and our state when it flew a surveillance balloon over Montana and other parts of our nation. But now that audience could be ripped away from White Bear, who testified at the Senate hearing in March, hoping to make an impact. Shutting down TikTok and putting its makers' livelihoods at risk is not going to stop people from making bad decisions. I just, I just expected more from Montanians. But if it's a, if it's a generation that is voting on this that doesn't understand like the app. Um, I don't know if they should be making these big decisions. Billings resident Xavier Strattenhein doesn't have a TikTok, but believes the potential ban that would go into effect January 1st, 2024 is an infringement on rights. Policymakers should work to create regulations that prioritize data privacy and security for all users rather than resorting to blanket bans on certain apps or technologies. Um, I do think this will withstand First Amendment scrutiny, uh, Madam Chair and Representative. Uh, again, we've done this in, in the least restrictive way we can. Uh, so the idea that this can't be done uh, is just simply not true. It, it can be done quite easily and there's a lot of data out there that, that that's doable. The bill states reasonings for the ban include TikTok stealing information from users and promoting dangerous content. There definitely is some problems with data sharing, but that's happening on Facebook. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Today was the final day of ski season at Red Lodge. The closing was extended by a week. Back when a couple of massive storms, yeah, they dumped about five feet of fresh powder on the town even toppling the roof of this business right here. Our Charlie Kleps returns to Red Lodge for a look at an epic season. It's the last day of the season here at Red Lodge Mountain. After a slow start to the year, Red Lodge was pounded with snow in the spring, and that's a big reason why the mountain was able to stay open today for one extra weekend. Ski season is more of a lifestyle for many Montanans. I try and get up here every week in between even as much as I can. And that's why the news of Red Lodge Mountain staying open for one extra weekend had many like Sam Grondin psyched. You know, it was awesome, especially getting the bonus weekend in here. Uh, just really great to get up here. Any snow is still snow. And there certainly hasn't been a lack of snow for the mountain this spring. Massive snowstorms doubled the mountain's total snowfall, making the conditions unbeatable. In the last uh, month, 
Things have really turned on. We doubled our snowfall at least and really improved conditions. Red Lodge Mountain GM Jeff Schmidt says the abundance of snow came at a great time and made the extra weekend a no brainer. Given the amount of snow, it seemed like we had to give at least a few more days. Like anything, it's nice to leave people happy. We're ending on a beautiful day today with the sun and good spring snow. The bonus weekend is always, you know, up to conditions and the conditions have been more than great till the end. So we finished really strong and we can't be happier about it. Red Lodge Mountain marketing manager Jack Moore says that while the season ended on a strong note, there was worry about the lack of snowfall early on. It's one of those things, it's like we are a late season mountain, but it really only, it really hits when you see it to believe it. We made up a lot of ground with these crowds and busyness and snow overall. And you definitely won't hear any complaints from Grandin and her buddies. Especially like during like March and April, March and like February, there's like probably the best skiing I've ever had. It was really great to just be able to get some more snow over here more to enjoy. In Red Lodge, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. A very different story today as it is nearly a perfect spring day. Now let's get it over to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh for a first look at the weather on this Sunday. But take a look at what's going on with the satellite radar mix for today where you see the clouds moving around that's the white areas but where the white isn't moving that's over towards red lodge into the bear tooth the crazies down into the big horns you can still see quite a bit of snow on the ground just taking pictures from outer space today so you can see that the plains though have really dried out with the warm temperatures no big surprise showers starting to move into western montana overall so here's where the computer analysis shows we still have snow on the ground and for the most part we're doing pretty well as far as the snow that's still on the surface but with those numbers still a little over 100 percent that means these warmer days continuing to increase the snow melt but that will change we'll give you details coming up a Billings family says their luck is running out after two separate incidents this past year. It started with a theft and now a house fire. Now the family's hoping the generous community of Billings might help out. Alina Howder shares their story. It's been a heck of a year for the Payne family. Tim Payne's work truck and tools were just stolen last December, and now this is all that's left of the family's trailer after it was devastated by a fire last Thursday. There's everything I own going up in flames. This trailer may not have been the Payne family's forever home, but it was everything to them. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. It's hard to explain the, the feeling watching everything you, you uh, own burn up and your shelter, you, I mean, your, your roof over your head going up in flames. Payne and Robbie Schneider were temporarily living in their trailer with their two little ones on a neighbor's property in the Heights before the flames broke out. We were kind of on the fence of moving to Oklahoma because we have land out there. That's why we, I mean, I have the camper ready to go out there. Those plans will now have to wait. Payne was working on a motorcycle in the garage when he saw the sparks last Thursday. There it goes. Say la vie. Everything you learn about fire safety kind of comes back to you when you're dealing with the fire, which it did to me. It was the first time I ever dealt with one like that and I couldn't deal with it. It was just too much. The couple isn't sure what caused the fire, and without insurance, they're not sure what their next steps are. The only thing I had insurance on is my truck, and it was uh, not part of the problem. But this is just the tip of the iceberg for the family. Tim's work truck and tools were stolen last year. That truck was eventually recovered, but not the tools. After, you know, so many things go wrong, it says you get used to it, I guess. The family is currently staying with one of their daughters and hope that with the help of the community, they can start over. You have moments of um, breakdowns, you know, because you start thinking about everything, all the little things, all the things that meant the most to you, you know. You can donate to the Payne family's GoFundMe by visiting this story on our website. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on this Sunday. Yellowstone National Park coming alive as the winter thaws. And did you know that some of the park's most iconic places tend to change season to season? We'll take a look at how Mammoth Hot Springs terraces will keep tourists guessing. It's ahead. 